Hey, have you ever heard that whisper in your ear? A silent voice, no noise, that your conscience translated and interpreted and only you could hear? No, not, not the good kind, but the bad, telling you to do as thou wilt, with no questions asked. Yeah, tell that lie, have that sex, smoke that cigarette, drink till you're drunk, you only live once, hashtag no regrets. I heard it too, and everything it suggested, I chose to do. I told a lot of lies, too many to count. But if I had to take a guess, I'd say a gross amount. Yeah, and that sex thing, I did that too. And afterwards, I felt so disgusted, ashamed, basic. So for your sake, the details I'll spare you. My last time in the act, laying there cold, looking up at the ceiling, crying on my back, praying to the Father to make me stop because quitting on my own is something to do that I just could not. Moving on to the blaze of my lungs, a guilty pleasure, yeah, yeah, and to be honest, the most difficult one to break free from. I could blame it on genetics because my family smoked, but I was around that white and I never touched coke. I could blame it on emotions, happy, sad, whatever the occasion. Light it up. Inhale deep. Relax with my eyes closed. Let it out slowly and watch the smoke smoothly fly out of my nose. What it comes down to is I had pleasure in my lust. All of them. They were engrafted in me and while I call them family, others call them sin. Maybe I could keep them quiet and no one would ever know. Have my cake and animate it while my spirited away. Nah, nah. I can't sleep. I'm scared of death. I gotta make a change. I talked to the elder. He said fast and pray. But what I didn't realize, it would take more than one day. But I did it. I fell. I did it again. And I fell once more. And the cycle continued. I was in the middle of life and knocking at death's door. You, you see, there comes a point when it ain't falling no more. A just man falling seven times was a gift and a curse. And I used that scripture to justify my flesh and kept diving in head first. I'd come up for air, then back down again. And I got used to the feeling of drowning and enlightened thoughts of success in this walk grew very dim. At some point, I began to wonder. What if my choices cause my sisters to stumble? How could I be winning with them if I have soul ties with what they're against? An enemy of my enemy is not my friend, and they're battling too, so what's my excuse then? Either give up the smoke or give up the ghost. You can't be a watchman for the most high if you're not fit to stand your post. My sister saved me. So to a higher assure a higher all the praise be. I put it all down. And so one day, most high willing, I'll pick up a crown. I traded my flesh and now I'm vested in life. So now I refuse to drown and preparing to be the bridegroom's wife. Man, man, man. So I was going through my emails, looking at old emails from me and Sister Bayon. May the most high rest her soul. We used to trade beats all the time. And I'm like, I know it's some beats in there that I haven't used. Um, and I came across this poem. And honestly, I do not remember writing it. Like, it just must have been straight spirit. Because I don't remember writing it. I know I wrote it. I know it came from me. But I don't remember writing it. And just hearing it and, and the growth, it's like, man, I'm not struggling with smoking. I'm not struggling with fornication. Like, when was it? It was October 24, 2019, two years ago, where I thought there was going to be no hope for me. I was going to be dealing with those things forever. Man, just all praise to the Most High God because it was real. It was real. And it was real dark. So, something I want to share with y'all, and most I will, and it helps someone else. 
you can get out of it. The most high can get you out of it. You gotta be willing and obedient. Shalom.